Today we are going to talk about how you can learn and improve your knife photography skill. This is gonna be the first part of a three-part video series that I'll be posting every two days. So let's get started. What's up YouTube and if you're new here and you want to learn more about photography, videography or general camera knowledge then start right now by clicking the subscribe button and the bell button beside. Follow me on Instagram as well if you want to learn more about camera settings because I'll be posting my settings with my photos every single day. It's really simple with night photography. Generally, there are two ways to do it. You can do it handheld or using a tripod. They both have different kinds of settings and they will produce different kinds of effects on your images as well. So in this episode one, we'll be talking about tripod and in episode two, we'll be talking about the handheld. Let's get started with tripod. In night photography, you would want some way to stabilize your camera and using a tripod is the easiest way to do it. If you don't have tripod and if you don't have any way to access to a tripod at the moment, then there's always ways to do it, like putting your camera on a rock, on a ledge, on a wall, on a pavement or something like that just to stabilize your camera. Generally, we would want to take picture with longer shutter speed, so any kind of micro shakes or micro jitters will eventually make your images to be blurred or not as sharp as you want. Now let's talk about camera settings. You will want to shoot everything in manual mode because you want to take charge of your picture. By doing auto mode, it will actually calculate it and compensate it with higher ISO. It doesn't really care about noise and you generally, you're gonna get really bad pictures. Basically, there are three key settings that you would want to master. ISO, aperture and shutter speed. I'm pretty sure you heard of these settings before, but which one should you set first? Where do you start? Well, the key thing is just remember this sequence, IAS, ISO, aperture and shutter speed. The easiest way you can get started is by setting your ISO down as low as possible. Recommended being around 100 to 640 ISO. Keep your ISO as low as you can because there's always going to be dark areas in your photos and by having higher ISO you're actually introducing more noise into your picture and that would ultimately affect the quality of your images. Now you have set your ISO. Let's move on to aperture. Aperture controls the amount of light that you're letting into your camera. And in night photography, you would want to have just the right amount of light into your camera so that you would have your images to be as sharp as possible. Letting in more light by enlarging your aperture doesn't necessarily mean that your images will turn out to be sharp. So my recommendation is to keep your ISO around F5 to F11. Now let's move on to shutter speed. Shutter speed is really really fun because you are literally controlling light. Set your shutter speed to around 8 to 30 seconds and you'll be amazed by what you can achieve. Now that's all the basics that you need and whatever they have said will only be a guide for you. How you want to take your pictures is entirely up to you and your creativity. Keep your ISO constant and just by adjusting your shutter speed and the aperture or vice versa, you will see a dramatic change in the image that you'll be producing. If you have any questions, now's the time to ask me in the comment section below. I will try my best to answer you as best as I could. In this first picture, I've actually set the ISO to 100 f8 and 30 seconds of shutter speed. While the second picture, which was taken in the same environment, I've actually kept the ISO at 100, aperture changed from f8 to f2, and shutter speed from 30 seconds to 100 of a second. And as you can see, there are two different kind of images, even though it's taken in the same environment. This is why night photography is so fun because there are unlimited ways where you can take a single picture. Also, night photography is the first thing I would want a beginner to learn because you'll be taking pictures on a tripod in a controlled environment where lighting doesn't really change that much. And this is where you will truly, truly, truly learn your camera settings. It's easier to see the effects of the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. Now you've done all your settings, it's time to move on to focus. 
At night, generally autofocus doesn't work that well, especially if your autofocus system uses the contrast system. So I would recommend that you to turn off your autofocus and use manual focus instead. Use your LCD and digitally zoom in into your pictures and adjust your focus from there. Make sure that it's dead smack focus and then it's time to move on. Now you've done your focus, it's time to not click your shutter button. Because by clicking your shutter button, you are actually introducing micro shakes or jitters to your camera up to four seconds. And to avoid this, it's really simple. Just get yourself a remote control that has the shutter click function to it, or the easiest way and it's free is by using yourself timer set your self timer to five seconds and above it's best if it's at 10 seconds so that you allow those shakes or those vibration to cool down to settle down before taking the picture and if your camera has a wi-fi or nfc function then you are lucky because you can always get the app on app store or play store for example, I'm using the Canon's Connect app. My friend is using Sony's Imaging Edge mobile app. So for me, I'm using this app to control every settings, including the ISO, the aperture, the shutter speed, and more. And by just a tap on my phone, I'm actually capturing the image on my camera. If you follow everything that I've said in this video, I'm certain that you will enjoy night photography even more and you will get better every time you shoot. And always remember to shoot everything in raw formats instead of JPEGs because you would want to color grade or make micro adjustments to your photos in post. So now it's time to go out and start taking some night photos. I'm really excited to see what you guys can come up with and also Comment down below and tell me about your experiences. Are my tips helpful or am I just wasting your time here? Well, that's it for episode one. And if you want to continue to learn more about night photography, then I do have episode two coming where we'll be talking about handheld night photography. You don't want to miss out on that. So start subscribing and click the bell button beside it. Like this video if you like it and dislike it if you don't like it. And again, thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.